What's going on, everybody? Paul here from Hashtag Sports. So I wanted to give you sort of a preview uh, for all the members of Hashtag Nation of, of the content that our, our premium membership is going to get. Uh, so this is our new segment, and we're going to talk about Zach Moss specifically. He has not signed yet. He's actually the only Bills uh, drafted player who is left to uh, sign. And that's got a lot of Bills fans kind of rubbed the wrong way. So let's dive a little bit deeper in Inside the Numbers, Outside the Hash. Okay, so Zach Moss not signing has raised a lot of red flags for Bills fans, but there's probably a lot of reasons for that. So what we're going to do is we're going to step back a little bit, kind of take a look at the roster implications, uh, what Zach Moss has as rights as far as a player goes, uh, and kind of how this whole rookie thing works out. A lot of people are just under the understanding that rookie contracts are all pre-negotiated. It's cut, copy, paste. It's the same for everybody. But the truth is that that's actually not true at all. There's a, There's still a bit of play. Now, this isn't 2006 where you know contracts were signed with reckless abandon for uh, rookies you had massive holdouts that could last months uh, player contract values were all over the place there is still a little bit of that and we'll get into that a little bit but uh, it, it is a very structured system now but it is not just cut copy paste it is like a little bit uh, different than that so let's talk about why Zach Moss might not have re-signed yet or might not have signed his rookie deal yet and uh, kind of look at some of the objective pieces of that, as well as the fit for him on the roster, uh, injury history, uh, future roster fit for him, current salary cap implications, further salary cap implications, and kind of how this contract will shape the uh, start of his NFL future. Because here's the deal. Once he signs his rookie deal, it cannot be renegotiated. There is no going back to the table on this. Once it's done, it's done. You cannot sign a rookie to a drafted contract and then renegotiate it in uh, two years. Uh, you can't do that. It's not allowed. So what you're going to do is you have to set a precedent with this contract. And the player actually has quite a bit of control here. But let's talk a little bit about Zach Moss, the player, because I think that plays into one of the reasons why he might be the lone player to remain unsigned. Uh, first off, we have a pandemic going on, and I'm not going to speak to anybody's viewpoint on that, but I think we need to be conscious of the fact that Zach Moss, while he is working out with some members of the Bills currently, Josh Allen, uh, you know, being namely among them, um, it may not be a situation that he is overtly comfortable with is walking in to sign a contract at one Bills drive yet. Uh, I don't want to speak for his opinions on that, but every person is uh, entitled to their own opinion. Uh, he has not made that public as to the reasons why he hasn't signed yet, and you shouldn't expect him to. Uh, but just be conscious of the fact that this is happening, and that could play into why he feels the way that he does. Next is, let's briefly look at his injury history, because that actually plays into this a bit more than a lot of people, again, might give credence to. First off, we'll go back to KSL.com. Um, this is back uh, prior to uh, this season. He ended up uh, getting injured in 2018. And, you know, that, a lot of people thought that he could enter the draft at that point. Unfortunately, he had a meniscus injury uh, that required surgery. And that has a tendency to kind of lower a player's draft stock, right? So while Zach Moss could have been drafted as early as the second round in last year's draft, that meniscus injury really did cost him. Um, and it was something that he looked at and said, you know what? I, My mom and I, we had a goal that I was going to go and I was going to finish my degree. I'm going to go do that. I'm going to go finish my degree at Utah. That's great. Good for you. He's very vocal about wanting to finish his degree. Great. He also called his time with the Utes unfinished business. And here's why. Returning for his senior season allowed him to do six things. They're all school records. So he set records for overall carries with 712. He set the rushing record, 4,162 yards. He set a record for most 100-yard games at 18. He set a record for rushing touchdowns. That's at 38. All-purpose touches, that's 778, and then total touchdowns at 41, and he was the All-Pac-12 player, Offensive Player of the Year. All in all, a very reasonable reason to return to school. You did not hurt yourself there, right? He had a meniscus injury, and uh, again, let's just break that down real quick. Meniscus injuries are kind of like... Um, uh, they're kind of like a shock absorber to your knee, right? They, they help distribute weight. So a meniscus injury, which is what he ran into in, in 2018, um, 
he required surgery for that. And that's a big deal. But it's not an ACL injury. So whenever you hear a player talk about, you know, oh, he had a knee injury, it does really matter what kind. An ACL is a band that runs across the middle of your knee that that helps with, uh, you know, twisting movements, right? So for a running back, paramount right meniscus injury a little bit different so again when you start talking about knee injury just keep in mind it's a meniscus injury not an acl injury um and we'll compare him uh, and we'll compare zach moss to another player who had an acl injury uh in a similar situation um in just a minute so uh, not only did he do that he did tie two school records one was 200 yard rushing games with two uh and the other was he had 15 touchdowns uh in his final season which also tied a school record um, he also was the first player in uh, Utes history to have three 1,000 rushing seasons. So a big checkbox for career accomplishments, right? Really cemented himself as uh, statistically probably the greatest running back uh, that Utah has ever had. And the Bills were able to get him with the 86th overall pick. All right, so that speaks to dedication and that speaks to integrity. Right now, could he have entered the draft into 2019? Sure, but he would be coming off a meniscus injury, and draft stock has a tendency to slide when uh, you have an injury that ended your college season. Um, you know, it was smart for him to return to school for a variety of reasons. Now, with that being said, how does that impact why he is not signed? Well, we kind of have to go to comparables for this. But before we do that, there, I heard a lot of chatter about people saying that Zach Moss doesn't want to be in Buffalo. So as a drafted player, you can actually refuse to sign your rookie contract and then re-enter the draft next season. A lot of people aren't aware of that, but it is actually within the CBA. If a player refuses to sign their rookie deal, the team does not hold his rights. He can actually go back into the draft. You can sit out the year and re-enter the draft next season. Um, that it, That is a possibility. Now, that is not what Zach Moss is doing here. Uh, if you go back and Zach Moss actually started his own YouTube channel. He's only got 850 subscribers right now. So that's crazy to me. So let's go get him some subs. He's released some content about his pre-draft process. There was about an eight minute, a uh, little over eight minute documentary, uh, kind of walking through his draft process and, and sort of who he is as a player, why he is the way he is, a little bit about his family, how he grew up in Miami. Um, so a lot of really great stuff there. Um, and you could see the the sheer joy on his face when he got drafted. So to tell me that Zach Moss doesn't want to be a Bill, I can't buy that, right? I just can't. Uh, you go and you go ahead and you look at his YouTube channel and you tell me what evidence is there that he doesn't want to be a Buffalo Bill. I cannot find it. Um, so for those of you who, who are stating that, I, I disagree wholeheartedly. He also ran a Twitter contest, believe it or not, and that Twitter contest said um, that he... Um, he would take somebody to uh, take somebody out for a meal once he was actually in Buffalo. Uh, once the pandemic ends, uh, that's great, right? That again shows investment. He wants to be here, and believe it or not, the person that he the, the person that he selected has like 88 subscribe 88 followers. So good for them snagging themselves uh, a meal with uh, with Zach Moss. So again, we're kind of unpacking here. He didn't come into the draft in 2019 because realistically integrity says he wanted to return and he had the ability to cement himself as the greatest rusher in youth history i don't blame him for going back he had the opportunity to sign with the entire draft class but again there's some things that we haven't gotten to yet and here's where we are first off um you have to realize that within rookie contracts, while the dollar figures are pretty solid as far as the total value of the contract, the way that those figures play is a little bit different. So there's a couple of rules. One is you can't have a more than 25% increase from year to year in value. Okay, that's one. Um, two is that signing bonus, there's room to play there. And actually, players have guarantees in their rookie deals that you may not know about. They're not actually tracked on overthecap.com. They're not tracked on spot track either. Um, but the signing bonus is the player's only guaranteed dollar, right? So whatever they get out on the signing bonus, that is their only guarantee. Um, now, their contracts can be guaranteed for things like performance. So if they're cut due to performance, they can guarantee future years of base salary. If they're cut because of cap casualty issues, they could be given future year salary. And if they're cut or they miss time due to injury, they could be given future salary compensation. So if I'm Zach Moss, there's really two things that I, I'm kind of my, I want my ears perked up at. 
I'm not super concerned about cap space. The Bills seem to be doing a good job of managing that cap space right now. Performance and injury, injury being the biggest one. I want the Bills to make sure that they're going to uh, guarantee my future in years two and years three of this contract against injury, which a rookie player has absolute right to do. The signing bonus is not their only source of income in that respect. They can get some money from their base salary if they lose time due to injury, if it's written into their rookie contract. Again, there's one bullet in this gun. They cannot renegotiate this. So Zach Moss, I would assume, is likely looking to position to try and get some in some sort of injury guarantee. Okay, so I think that's kind of paramount, but this is where we start walking into some comparisons. And again, this is important to players. Now we may look at it and say, well, Paul, it's, you know, only $20,000, who cares? $20,000 is a big deal, especially when you talk about the money that a player is going to take back from their signing bonus. That initial signing bonus, player's residency determines how much they get taxed on their initial signing bonus money. Yes, that's true. So take a player like Patrick Mahomes. Perfect example, right? Patrick Mahomes was residing in the state of Texas. So when he signed his rookie deal, he got that money up front in the state of Texas with no tax, right? If he were to defer some of that signing bonus money, if he had any money that was deferred to a later year, he would have been taxed at 6% on that money. It would have cost him money to actually get the money later or get the money done. Oh, so roster bonuses, things like that. Tax implications all exist in those circumstances. You have to be very aware. Player residency is what determines that initial signing bonus. In New York, that's a big deal. You need to know what a player is walking away with because that day one dollar, big, big, big impact. Okay, finally, let's look at a little bit more in depth as far as the rest of the class. First off, there were 19 overall running backs drafted in this NFL draft class. 19. One has signed. It is J.K. Dobbins. He was drafted 55th. No other running back has signed. And when I talked about precedent before in like 2006 to anything before 2011, precedent at the position was super important. You never wanted to sign a contract before the player ahead of you, right? Um, because that player ahead of you could sign a massive deal and that was going to positively, positively impact you. Waiting was okay. Uh, nowadays, there's not as much of a rush. Um, you know, there's not, I'm sorry, there's not as much a need um, to sit and wait but only one running back has signed out of this entire draft class. And there were four running backs drafted between J.K. Dobbins and Zach Moss. Smart to wait this one out. Uh, because again, you're going to kind of see the way that signing bonus money is structured. So a few things are at play here. Again, Zach Moss would be only the second running back to have signed his rookie deal uh, out of the 19 drafted. Again, no rush there. Two, he needs to make sure that he gets the most money while residing in a state that doesn't have New York state taxes. Two, three, he's got to make sure that in there are injury inclusions for the rookie protection. And again, he's got to get that right from day one. So this has nothing to do with him not wanting to be in Buffalo. This has nothing to do with any of that. He needs to get himself the protections for his family and in the future. But now we get to a final comparison, and that is to a player whom I thought was the best running back in a previous draft class, Bryce Love. And here's where sort of the comparisons lie, right? We're looking at two former offensive players of the year with um, Bryce Love versus Zach Moss, both out of the Pac-12. Um, so first off, uh, Bryce Love was the career yards per carry leader for Stanford, uh, 6.79 yards per carry, 16 hundred yard games, uh, three point or 3,800 about yards uh, in total carry. So again, numbers relatively similar to Zach Moss. Um, he had 30 touchdowns as opposed to Moss's 38, uh, 569 carries. So he did all that damage on 569 carries versus Moss's 712. Um, and uh, he did rush for in five games in 2017, a thousand yards in just five games at a five game stretch. So straight fire from Bryce Love. Big difference here. Bryce Love was drafted 112th overall by the Washington Redskins. And will somebody for the love of God stop Daniel Snyder? Washington is where careers go to die via knee injuries with Alex Smith. It almost cost him his life. Alex Smith, RG3, uh, Bryce Love, um, I mean, I can think of so many guys who have lost their careers to having to play for Washington. It's just, and they just die to the field. And anyway, anyway, anyway. So Bryce Love got injured prior to going to Washington, but being in Washington is not going to help him. 
Um, so in any case, um, with Bryce Love, you take a look at his contract and you're going to see significantly lower signing bonus money. Um, now, mind you, this is a different draft class, so you have to take that into account. Actually, Eno Benjamin is making almost as much money, and he was drafted in the seventh round, as Bryce Love, who was drafted in the fourth round. So, again, you have to kind of take this with a little bit of a grain of salt. But if you're taking a look at total dollar of signing bonus per contract dollar, you'll notice that Bryce Love isn't making all that much money in guarantees uh, because of the injury history, right? That was an ACL tear versus a meniscus tear. So, Again, different types of injuries. Also, Zach Moss was a year recovered from his meniscus tear. Meniscus tear. Bryce Love uh, was not. He injured it in the final game of his college career. Uh, tore his ACL and required surgery. So again, all this makes a difference. It's okay that Zach Moss hasn't signed yet. There's plenty of reasons for it. And for his future, his family's future, he is smart to wait. So this was a preview of what the what kind of content you're going to get with the premium membership through hashtag sports. So thank you so much for joining me again. My name is Paul Sports. Let's see if we can get Zach Moss on because that would be pretty sweet. But only you, the nation, can do it. We don't have the contacts for it. I'm sitting here in my basement in Lockport. Like I, I don't contacts to get Zach Moss on. But with enough YouTube comments, maybe we can get him on. So let's go get Zach Moss. Let's go get him those subs. And thank you so much for hanging with me. I uh, will talk to you guys soon. Have a great day.